All right, let's take you through the scenarios of the Big 12 Championship. Who is going to win this league? First and foremost, this is a league that is being dominated by Oklahoma State and Texas. They're the only two, the only two one-loss teams. That makes sense. The only teams with one loss right now. If there are multiple teams tied with a chance to go to the Big 12 title, which is where it looks like we're going with a few weeks left. I gave you earlier, there are seven teams, seven teams in the conversation of winning a Big 12 championship. Texas, Oklahoma State, Kansas, Kansas State, Oklahoma, West Virginia, Iowa State. All of those teams have a shot. Hell, three games to go. Even Texas Tech has an outsider's chance of going to the Big 12 championship game. I'm not going to tell you about them, though. I'm not, not going to go that far. If there is a tiebreaker, though, I read this. This is straight from the Big 12 website. Head-to-head is where you go first, right? If not, every tied team has played each other. Go to step two. Step two here. Record against the next highest place common opponent in the standings. So if Texas is at one and there are three teams tied at two and one of those three teams has beaten Texas, a la and Oklahoma, then since they have the better record against a higher placed, well, it says common opponent. So you guess the other teams will have had to play Texas. They get to jump in the standings. But if you get there and other teams have not played them, then that kind of flies out the window. We have to go to win percentage against all common conference opponents. So you played Iowa State. We played Iowa State. And the other team tied with us is Iowa State. Well, then how do we... Because we could... uh, We did... Right? Is that confusing to you as well? Let's go to number four then. Combined win percentage in conference games of conference opponents. So you basically take, take the strength of conference schedule. So now we can pull... All right, you beat... Baylor and they suck. You and and you beat Houston and they're not very good. You beat Cincinnati and they've lost a ton of games. Oh wow! Well, your conference schedule. Look at you, Oklahoma State is not that tough. Therefore, a team like in Iowa State, who you say, oh well, they played Kansas, who was really good. They played Oklahoma State, who was really good. Then you say they have the tougher conference schedule by the fourth stipulation that breaks a tie. They could make it in the fifth stipulation. If, we, if by then we still can't find a winner. This is total number of wins in a 12-game season. They'll allow you one win against an FCS opponent. (laughs) They'll count one of those, not two of them. And now we say, all right, well, you're eight and four, you're eight and four, and you're eight and four. Well, you you all beat out criteria number two. You're still tied. Criteria number three, the win percentage against common conference opponents, we're still tied. Your, your combined win percentage, your strength of schedule in conference is still tied. And you're all eight and four. So we go to number six. And that is your ranking by sports source analytics. That's right. We say, hmm, here's what this algorithm thinks your team is. And that's what's going to decide who goes to the Big 12 championship. If there's a three or four way tie or a five way tie, and we're trying to decipher who's beaten who and what record goes where. Again, do you see how confusing all this is? If none of those work, if the six steps don't work, including if there's still a tie from the Sports Source Analytics team rating score metric, we go to a coin toss. Good old fashioned five team coin toss. But let's do a heads or tails tournament. I went to Fansided, read a great article at Fansided. This one written by John Bueller. And John breaks every one of these down, has the standings in there as well, and says the season ended today. Obviously, Texas and Oklahoma State are in the Big 12 championship game. Right now for Kansas, they're a team that I look at and say, all right, you still have an okay chance. You lost to Texas and Oklahoma State. That doesn't do you any favors, but you get Texas Tech, Kansas State, and Cincinnati down the stretch. That's an opportunity to beat Cincinnati, have the tiebreaker over them. There are teams in this conversation, and then you should beat Texas Tech and Cincinnati. So if you've got the Kansas State win, Cincy and Tech, you can go to 10 and 2, 7 and 2 in conference play. And then at that point, you need Oklahoma State or Texas, one of those teams, to lose two more down the stretch. They're going to have to finish with six and three records in conference play. That's where your hangup is. You have a great job to control your own destiny in a way of, hey, we feel like we can win these next three games. However, you need one of those two teams to lose not just one, but two. Kansas being four and two in conference play. Um, what has Kansas State, I'm sorry, also four and two in conference play. Wouldn't prevent you from getting in there, but your loss to Oklahoma State doesn't help. Your loss to Texas, you're in Kansas boat. You're probably going to beat Baylor. An Iowa State game might be close. That Kansas game is going to be huge for who stays alive in the Big 12 championship conversation as it sits for Kansas State after the Baylor win, two games to go. You, my friend, are also going to need Texas or Oklahoma State to finish with three losses in conference play. They each both have one. 
Oklahoma is in a better spot than Kansas State and Kansas, all things considered right now. That loss to Oklahoma State hurts them, but they have the tiebreaker over Texas. So if Texas is to lose another game, they dropped two games, uh, two games lost in Big 12 play, Oklahoma then has the tiebreaker. But here's the question we start to ask if that happens. Who did Texas lose to? And moreover, did Oklahoma lose to another team that's tied with them that would create that tiebreaker scenario? So Oklahoma's win over Texas could put them in Arlington playing Oklahoma State later this year if Texas loses another game. However, if we're in a tiebreaker scenario, we're going to need more clarification on the seven steps, including a coin toss, the Big 12 allows. Again, see how complex this is. West Virginia. 4-2 4-2 and two in Big 12 play, and after two straight wins, they are right back in the conversation of a Big 12 championship. Their best win in conference play is over Texas Tech. They've lost to Oklahoma State and Houston, but that Houston loss doesn't really hurt them because Houston's not in this conversation for the Big 12 championship. There's not a, oh, Houston has the tiebreaker because of the head-to-head. Oklahoma State, though, they, they do. They do. You need to beat Oklahoma. Let's start there with West Virginia. We can figure you out. You're going to beat Baylor and Cincy. You need to beat Oklahoma. Then we can try to figure you out. Iowa State, 4-2 and two in league play right now. You have the head-to-head over Oklahoma State. That bodes well for you. So if they lose another game down the stretch, you have the tiebreaker over the Cowboys. You don't have the tiebreaker with Oklahoma or Kansas. That's where things get hairy. What if Oklahoma State loses a game, and then you have two lost teams that are Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, Kansas and Iowa State. What do we do with that? They're all at two losses. Some of them have beat each other. Now what? And then there's Texas Tech. You're still in the hunt, I guess. I don't know how. And I'm not about to let my brain explode trying to figure it out. So there you go. This is tough. And none of it makes sense. Hopefully that made a little bit of sense to you. You piecing it together? Eh, tough to unpack. I'll try again later this week. Sorry. This is Locked On Big 12, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by LinkedIn Talent Solutions. Telling you what, LinkedIn Talent Solutions is where I go when I need to hire. And I hire a lot. Once every season, you know, like one in the fall, one in the spring, one in the summer even sometimes, I will hire an intern. And I go to linkedin.com forward slash locked on college. Would you like to be my intern? That'd be awesome. It can be remote. That's so fun. LinkedIn Talent Solutions is where I go to find mine because they have not missed yet. Right now, purple hashtag hiring frame on their website. I know a lot of you probably use LinkedIn already. You add your hire to the purple hashtag hiring frame. Let them know, hey, we need we have an opening. We need somebody. There are simple tools, screening questions. Make it easy to focus on the right candidate. Small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs help you find your qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. LinkedIn.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Keep in mind terms and conditions do apply. 